It's been a while since I found a manhwa or manga that I can quickly binge. Like it has about 160 chapters, 165 chapters. I binge read the whole thing in like a week. That's how good it is. The beginning at the end, I think I only have probably solo leveling maybe and Tower of God ahead of it in manhwa ratings. Like it is so good, like mind-blowingly good. Similar to Moshoku Tensei, but it has, I would say the first like 10, 20 chapters, very similar to Mushoku Tensei, like, it is very similar, and I liked that, like, some people thought it was slow, but for me, it quickly hooked me in, and I liked how you see the progression with him and his family, so you grow attached with the family, which is going to serve a role later on in the story, and everything that you see, the characters that you have attachments to, is not just for shits and giggles, like, you're going to get to know them and like that attachment is going to come into play later on like each character that you build an attachment to in the first season author who was the main character like is this kid that we see him is transported into this world as a baby and we get to know him his family the dynamics the world essentially we grow with him and we get to know the world so we are exposed to the world from his viewpoint so we see new techniques new like the, the fighting system all these things uh, the mother and the father were former mages, so we get to know their skill set. They see him as a baby, but we know he has the mindset, mind of an adult. And all these things, like, they build up in the story and, like, you're you're curious, like, what's going to happen? Like, what is he going to do in the future? Like, he has a great affinity for, like, learning magic and stuff like that. And he knows the kind of things to do because, like, in his old world, he was a powerful warrior. And now he has to start from zero essentially and it is nothing short of spectacular the things that i like to take a pause don't forget to like comment subscribe you can comment later you can share after the video but like subscribe enjoy the things that i liked about the beginning after the end the most were i liked how each season had its own theme and you can clearly differentiate the seasons like the first season like him me and sylvia and like we us as the readers getting introduced to the concepts of the world, him also getting introduced to the concept of the world. I like that. Uh, Mina Sylvia, who plays a major role, especially in season three. Season two, that's where he joined the Adventurers Guild and he took the name of Note. Note was a phenomenal character. Like, I loved that. Uh, that's where we got acquainted to the other person that belonged to the Two Horns. I loved the interactions for that when we met Elijah for in that season also. We grew attached to all these characters that later on played a major role in season three. Like each season felt needed and like it was a build up to the next season. They were not just wasting time. Like it was not filler and it felt this is important and like you get the hype. There's a lot of hype in this if I haven't mentioned. A lot of hype. Third season, that's where he joins the academy. Like it's been built up since season one for him to join up the academy to meet people at his peers essentially that are his age. And we see how different he is compared to the other people that are in his age group, age bracket. And you can see the clear difference in maturity, clear difference in his thoughts and his abilities. Like, because he went to the school, he said he was a dual elemental after we knew he was a quadra elemental. The professor knew she was a, he was a quadra elemental, but nobody else knew. So that created intrigue because he wanted to learn the other two elements that he was weaker at and to train in that. Like the second season he was training in his swordsmanship, the third season he was training in his weaker elements. And this is amazing. Like the way the mangaka, or I don't know what you, author, drew them, like it's beautiful. Like the art, I didn't even talk about the art. The art is beautiful, it, it pulls you in. Like you're reading it and you just feel involved in the story. You get so engrossed into reading this, it's so good. Like the art is not, obviously uh in a way, but like it is the way they draw it like i don't know how to explain it just read it i'm gonna put a couple of panels not major spoilers but like a couple of panels that you're gonna have a feel of what it is the character development also i haven't spoken about the character development the character development is amazing when you see his interactions with tess and like how it later on builds up in the royal family you see author from this kid but we know his background and that definitely shows that he is an adult in a child's body and he is not afraid of authority. He is not afraid to assert his dominance where he feels is needed. And we saw that perfectly in the second season where the king wanted to take away 
Sylvia, and he was not down for this, and he was willing to fight the entire monarchy for his for his bond, right? And it's just beautiful the way it's described, the way you see the progression, and you can feel the tension. Like everything is amazing. If I have just one drawback of this series, the emotions, like apart from season three, like the first two seasons were not. You don't feel the emotions as heavy. Maybe I'm emotionally dead, but like the first two seasons, I didn't really feel that emotional. The third season, yeah, like I felt emotional, especially in the academy when like things were going down. I was like, when is Arthur gonna get here? And when he got there, like I felt this breath of fresh air, like I can now breathe. You can feel the tension in the air. You can feel what is going on in like what is the stake essentially, and. Nothing short of applause for the author, and I am looking forward to the rest of the season. I think there's just ten chapters left, but the way they set it up, the only thing that I'm kind of also scared of is a lot of series that set it up their show like this. It could go either way. Like it could go amazing, like phenomenal, like Kingdom with their wars, or because this is a war arc and you do not know what to expect. Like it, it could be literally the best written arc. Or it could be the worst. It could be the undoing of the series. So, I am kind of nervous, but excited, nervous. And I feel like the author is gonna pull through in this one. We've seen author now in his training arc, and at the end of each season, we see him training arc. So this one is gonna be the training arc that he goes to the deities, right? I am looking forward to it. Um, can't wait to see the rest of the season. Let me know if you've started reading it, or if you've read it, or you're thinking about reading it. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Thumbs out.